Okay, so uh, let's all stand up. Let us go straight to the Word of God this afternoon. So, basahin po natin. Uh, please, I am going to continue my uh, preaching on the book of Galatians chapter 1. And I will be tackling the last five verses of chapter 1 of Galatians. So, let us read this uh, responsibly. Starting from verse 20, I will be read, reading verse 20, and then you will be reading 21, and then we'll be read together in, in verse 24. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Verse 20, Now the things which I write unto you, be, behold, before God I lie not. And was unknown by faith unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. Let's read all together, verse 24. And they glorify God in me. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this afternoon. We are so privileged, O oh God. We are so, uh, we are so blessed, O oh God, as we continue to study your word. And Lord, as we continue to uh, study your word in our midst, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to move freely in our lives, especially to the life of your servant. Lord, without you, I cannot do anything. Let the motive of your word, O oh God, be teach this afternoon be preached this afternoon and let your name be glorified lord we just pray and we humble ourselves before you please help us let there be illumination of your word let there be wisdom as i teach your words of god and lord please anoint my lips because without you god i cannot do anything lord please forgive us of all our sin in jesus name i pray amen, amen. <coughs> okay so uh, i'll be uh, tackling for the the last five verses from galatians chapter uh, one verses uh, 2020 until 24. So I gave uh, a title to my preaching for this afternoon. Uh, this is the title. Believe and live the word. Believe and live the word. So here we can see Paul how, uh, how uh, the life of Apostle Paul used by God. But on the other hand, we can see Paul that how Apostle Paul served God faithfully how he gave his life to God, and how he was willing to give his life for the Lord. Which is that, uh, it is not something na magaginagawa ng mga ibang tao. So let us be, be practical when it, come to, when it comes to that. Makikita po natin that the life of Apostle Paul is a life dedicated to God. If you are going to study the, the life of Apostle Paul, Paul is a name of uh, a Roman name, and Saul was the Hebrew name. But here you can see that if we're going to study the life of Apostle Paul, before and after he got saved, you will see the dedication of his life serving God. Although in the time when he was a Pharisee, you can see how even wants to kill or even drag the Christian to bring them back in Jerusalem, for them to be put in trial, to be tortured, to be, to be punished, because they are, he is thinking that they are following a uh, false prophet, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. You will see the dedication there, and after we got saved, you will see his dedication also, how he follow God. And here we can see much more, because he is now living under the grace of God. As just like uh, Preacher Mon this morning, he said that being faithful, hindi yung basta-basta na huwa. We need to live. We need to do it. We need to, to do that for the Lord. We need to be faithful. Although we are weak and we have no strength without God. So this afternoon, if you're going to study, actually, to be honest with you, I've been struggling with these five verses. I'm, not, I'm struggling not because I do not know. But I said, when I started to study this, I didn't know that ganito rin pala kalawak ito. So here... I am going to uh, be, uh, be uh, mentioning the previous verses from chapter 1. And uh, I'll be concentrating in verse 20 and then uh, tackling the following verses. But here, we can see that uh, Apostle Paul is like making a, a conclusion. Like moreover, now, he said in verse 20, verse 20, he said, Now the things which I write unto you, Behold, before God, I lie not. So here we can see how Paul is trying to make a, uh, making a point. 
in all the things that he had mentioned on the upper verses, on the, on the verses that uh, in chapter 1. So here, makikita po natin on, on how he is really seriously and so uh, talagang merong dedication on to prove when it can, or how to prove his calling and how to follow God in his life. Here, we can see in verse 20, in verse 20 I, I cut it into two. In, in, in 20 verse, letter A, he said, Now the things which I write unto you. So here, what are the things that he wrote? So if we will go back up in the upper verses, we will see that. But most especially he's mentioning on how long he stayed with Peter, with James, when did he go to Jerusalem? So here we will see that. So here, in this short word or sentences, there, these letters will show us some concern about the following, what Apostle Paul did. Here, we can see in verse 13 and, verse 13 and 14. In uh, Galatia 13 and 14, we, let us try to... Uh, See this thing. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jewish religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Verse 14. And profited in the Jewish religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. What is trying to say here? Paul is saying here we can see that He's talking about his education. He's talking about his religion, his principles, his practices before his conversion. So we can see how Paul, we can see that how knowledgeable he is. And we can see how uh, his life that is uh, being a Pharisee, is not just an ordinary Pharisee. Paul, ano siya, matalino siya. What he said, I am above my own equals. Which is saying that upon those people with my own age on that time, I am the one leading. So we can see that. And Paul, he can say, he can easily say, Iba ako, iba to, marunong to, matalino to. So what that what is Paul is saying here, when it comes to here, his education and his principle in his religion before he got saved. So this is the one thing that we can see, this concern of his background before, before he got saved. But if you will go to Galatians chapter 3 verse 8, let us see the, the transition of, of what he had said before and until he got saved. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 8, he said, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Christ Jesus my Lord, of whom I have suffered the loss of all things. These are the all things. That, those are the all things. And do not, and do not count, uh, and do count them but down that I may win Christ. Here you can see all those backgrounds of Paul of who he is before. He's just counting them, but dung. What is dung? Animal manure. And he's saying, those things are nothing just for me to have Christ. My question is this. Church, I would like to ask you this question. How important Christ in your life? You know, you, we, may, we may always hear and, and listen to this question that how important Christ in your life, but, but the truth is, how is it? As a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, how do we really struggle, just like Pastor said, how do we really strive for us to have Christ in our lives, for Him to be seen, for Him to be one in our life? Ano pong ginagawa natin? What is, what is the thing that we are doing now? If I am going to ask you now, what are you doing now for you to say that you really love God? You really love God? I am not trying to get to, I am tar, and tar, and trying to challenge you. What are you doing now for you to really have Christ in your life? Yes, we are saved. But what are we doing for us to be seen, for us to be, to see this Christ in our life? Yes, we are not perfect. In the I perfect, we know that. But kapatid, there is, must be a struggle, there must be an effort for us to do this. This is not something that, this is not a joke. You see the life of Apostle Paul? Sabi niya, kung gusto niyo lang ng ganito, ng, uh, if you just like this life, well, I have that already. But for me to have Christ in my life, I, called, I count all these things but dung. Nothing. This is vile. This is nothing. 
meaningless, futile, nothing, nada, but for him to have Christ. What is in Christ? What is in Christ? I think something that we need to think about. What is it about Christ? Do we have relationship with him? If we are saved, ang sabi ni pastor, as a Christian, it will not be a struggle for you to attend church. Why? Because there is a Holy Spirit in you pushing you to go to the church to obey the word of God. I hope makita niyo po ito, I'm trying to, but I want you to see this, who Christ is. Kasi po bilang mga mananampalataya, this is our main joy, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, a pastor Paul, in a, in a, if you're going to paraphrase it, tinalikuran niya lahat, just to have Christ. Why? You, you will see the change in his life. In Acts chapter 8, he's persecuting the church. In Acts chapter 9, he started preaching. Sa ilang araw lang yata yun. You see the change. How he repented, how he turned, oh, he turned, he changed his mind. How he changed his action because of Christ. He changed his life or his action or, or uh, his belief when, he, when he, he met the Lord Jesus Christ. Since then he said, all of these things that I have before, they are nothing. So we see, we see that this education, he did not care about. Kung ano man siya before, ano man siya before, kung ano man meron siya before. Do you know that the father of Paul is a, a Pharisee also? Even, I think, even his grandfather. Hindi siya napipitsugin. And we know that Paul studied under the teaching of Gamaliel. One of the first, best teachers that time. Alam po natin yan. But he said, these things are nothing. So here, we can see that the, one of the things that we can see that about his background. And one more thing, he's calling, he's calling by the grace of God in verse 15 and in 16. Galatians 3.15, it says, But when, I, when, it, when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the, the heathen, the Gentiles, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. What does it mean? What, what is he trying to say here? We can see uh, that Paul, for him to preach the gospel, to preach the word of God, he's saying, Who am I? Who am I? In ito sa laman at sa dugo. It is not by flesh and blood. He's saying that, who am I? I cannot do this. If you are saying you are now living your Christian life because of yourself, you are not living for Christ. The only reason why we live, it is because of Christ giving us a strength. And that is the main thing in our life. We cannot do everything. We cannot do even small things if we don't have Christ in our life. He's saying that, I am not worthy in verse 16 can you uh, sorry, in verse 16 7, to reveal his son in me that i might preach him among the heathen immediately i conferred not with flesh and blood hindi ito sa akin it is the power of god moving in me it is the power of the holy spirit in me the reason why i was able to preach the gospel so here we can see what he's saying makita niyo yung dugdong sabi niya all of this are nothing because i am christ and now I am preaching, I am doing this not because of my own, but because of the strength of the Lord. Hope we, hope we can see that. Tayo po, sasabihin nyo minsan, eh, Brother Ayas, alam lang ako, Pastor, ganito lang po ginagawa ko sa church. Eh. Actually nga po, wala nga po kong trabaho. Eh. eh bakit? Sino ka ba sarapan ng Diyos? Who are you before God? We are the one making ourselves less, although we, do, we should not boast about it, but we need to see the importance of having Christ in our life. Isn't that what Paul is saying and talking about? Sabi niya rito, I am not worthy, but because of the grace of God, I was able by the grace of God. Yun po yung pinapakito rito ni, ni Apostle Paul. I, sabi niya rito, in verse 13, I even persecuted the church, but by his, by his in verse 13, sorry, sorry, verse 13, in verse 13, Paul, ye have heard my, of my conversation in time past in the Jewish religion, how that beyond, mercy, beyond measure, I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Sabi niya, sabi niya, he even persecuted the church, 
but by His grace, God used him. Ano bang pinakasasabi? Maybe some of us were thinking, oh, I'm just like this. I am just like I don't have I don't have the intellect. I don't have. If you are willing to give your life to God, that is more than enough for God to use you. The only thing that we don't have is that we are not. We don't want to give our life to God. We don't. We don't. We are not. We are not available to give our life to God. Though we have a lot of time, we don't want to give our life. How is our Bible reading? It's always being mentioned here. How is our prayer life? Are we really still praying? But here Paul says, although I am not worthy, by the grace of God, he used me. He said, he even, he even persecuted the church, but now by the grace of God, he is being used. Don't think, ang gagamitin lang Panginoon, Panginoon, God will use all those people who have, the wisdom, who have the wisdom and have the knowledge. Those who have the guts. Who have the guts? Wala. No one. Except by the grace of God. Except by the grace of God. We can only serve God except by His grace. Only through His grace. Wala ho tayong lakas. We don't have enough strength to do this. You remove Christ, we remove everything. Without Christ, we are nothing. Pero minsan, it's being common. Until you put a fire on that, you will not be able to burn in serving God. There will be a seriousness in serving God. Sometimes when we see even in the places, or for example, our outreach, oh, kukunti na lang, no, no, I think it's not, it's not for me anymore to come here, or for me not, I need to go there because here are uh, lesser na lang sila. No. Yesterday I was challenged by the people, the parents, when they, uh, what do you call this, when we are gathering, and there are only the three of them, and the, the one of them smiled and said, oh, only the three of us. And I was challenged and shared to them, Matthew 18, 20, that two or three gathering in my name, I will be in the midst of them. I said, we are blessed. So we need to see that. As a believer, we need to see that, that we, can, we cannot serve God without Him. Some think they are serving God because they are using their own strength. That is a big no-no. If we are going to a Mr. Mirka, can you please open in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14? It says here, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we does just that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Who that, that, that one for all? That is Jesus Christ. But only the love of God pushes us. Only the love of God drives us. Only the love of Christ Give us the strength, the ability to do it. Di ba sabi ng anong baso dito? It is not our love because our love are iindap, uh, indap, indap na lang. Nawawala. But if the love of Christ will rekindle, will, the love of Christ will continue to burn in our hearts and then we will continue to serve Him with joy in our hearts. Not forgetting those struggles in our life. Marami o tayong struggles sa buhay. Every point, everywhere, there are temptations, everywhere there are trials that we can see. But if we have the love of God, we can continue on on the things that God wants us to do. Remember, we cannot do anything without the Lord. Without Him, there's nothing that we can do. Without Him, we're just mere uh, pangatong. So I hope and I see we, we will see the importance of these things in our life. I hope and I pray that we're going to be challenged whenever we hear, listen to the preaching. This morning, I am so blessed. And to it is not because the, the beauty of the preaching, but because of the message. Because if you are really serious, you want to obey the Lord, and then you will see that. If you have the Holy Spirit, the preacher have the Holy Spirit, you will be in unison. Because the Holy Spirit is the only one making a point on those messages. He's the one delivering them. He's the one converting them to go to, to be understood in our mind. Ang kapangyarihan lang po ng Banal Espiritu. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, and then you will not understand this. There's nothing you can do. 
kahit mapamatay ka pa, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will not be able to understand the Word of God. And no one will do, except we have the Holy Spirit in our life. So I hope and I pray we, see this, we will see this importance in our life that without the Lord, we can do nothing. And one more thing that is uh, concerned uh, concern about these things is that uh, those things that he wrote, his travel in uh, Galatians chapter 17 to 18. In 17 it says, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to, unto Damascus. 18. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. 19. But other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. So here, what trying, uh, Paul, uh, uh, Paul is trying to see, uh, show is that when they saw, when he saw Peter, James, he did not study with them. He actually mentioned three years. He studied with the Lord Jesus Christ in Arabia for three years. Why three years? Have you noticed that? Why three years? Why the Lord taught him three years? Hindi ba? Ano lang po ito. I'm not trying to give you something. But when he taught the apostles, the 12 apostles, he taught them three years also. But I'm not trying to give any, any meaning on that. But at least here we can see that apostle Paul saying, trying to mention, no, I did not study with them. The Lord taught me. He's the one who gave me this revelation. He's the one who gave me these teachings. That's why I understood. Kung, if you are trying to say that Peter taught me, I only stayed with him 15 days. How can I learn all of these things when I only stayed with him 15 days? And then he went to Jerusalem after three years. So you can see the, the sequence of uh, happening here. Pinapakita po ni Apostle Paul. He wasn't, taught, he wasn't taught or sent by the apostle or Peter or James. He only about 15 days to them. So here we can see, but we can see that Paul is trying to make uh, Rito, a point. Sabi niya, it's, if you're going to uh, paraphrase it, is kung nakita niyo kung ganun, ganito ngayon, it is because of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one who taught me. He's the one who gave me the revelation from this. Okay, so we see that. So these are the things that he's saying. Uh, sabi niya, uh, now the things which I write unto you. These are the things that he wrote. Now, here we can see on the, on the, on the half part of this, he's saying in 20 letter B, Behold, before God, I lie not. Bang hirap? Parang hirap ano yun, di ba? Yung bang kunyari ganito. Sino bang magandang iyan o rito? Kasi brother mo na lang. O, si brother mo na lang. O, ano namang, uh, in good term naman kami nito. Sabihin ni brother mo, alam, punta kayo doon. Maraming pagkain doon. Libre. Masarap. Punta lang kayo, kakain kayo. At hindi kayo babawalan. E ang problema, kilala natin itong sinungaling. Will you believe him? Di ba? Ang hirap doon. Di ba yung, minsan, totoo man yung sinasabi niya and because we know that he is a liar, it will be impossible for us to believe. But here, Paul is not a liar. He's trying to make a point. And I hope we could study more on this than while we go on to this preaching. Here he said, Behold, sabi niya, tignan niyo, Before God, Before God, I lie not. What is trying to say? What is Paul trying to say here? Paul is a faithful servant of the Lord. We know that. But for here we can see is making God his witness. He's making God his witness. Here, sabi niya, before, Behold, before God I lie not. Here we can see living his life with God. Here, he's, ma he's making God his witness. So we can see that. And let me give you some verses that, that, that are cross reference to this verse. But at least we can see now here is Paul is trying to, to show these people if you are going to study this, the life of Paul here is like in the book of Nehemiah. We see that the book, the book of Nehemiah, while they are building, 
they have their swords. While Paul is building and teaching these believers in Galatia, he is defending the gospel. He's fighting for it. Sabi niya, if you are going to study the, the book of Galatians, Paul is in a, in a mode of, he's, uh, what do you call this? He's in, he's in a holy anger. Talagang galit po siya dito. Why? They are trying to devastate the gospel. They are, this, this Judaizer, they are trying to destroy the gospel. Which he shared to them. Which they believe. Now this Judaizer, they are trying to destroy the gospel. By adding words on what they have they have known by believing on the Lord, here having faith on the Lord. Now you need to add works. That's why Paul is so angry with this. You are trying to destroy the gospel. So here he said, when in uh, in verse one he said, "Now the things that I say to you, I lie not. I am not lying." We can see also here some some verses that we can see how how Paul is saying when he always say this that uh, he is not lying. What I am saying, God is my witness. Before I continue, we know that God sees us, right? He can see us everywhere we go. He is our witness. And if you have a witness like God, what will you do? What will you do if you have the witness of God in your life? Because now you are a child of God. If you are not a child of God, it's okay. You don't mind them. So believe it or not, that is what the Bible is saying, but tayo po bilang mga mananampalataya, although God want them to be saved, but for us, we are saying that God is our witness. What are we going to do? Ang Panginoon po ang witness natin sa lahat ng ating ginagawa. When you are teaching, when you are driving, when you are walking, when you are do- doing things, God sees you. God sees us. He is our witness. But here Paul is saying, God is my witness. Let us go uh, some uh, to some verses in Romans chapter nine, verse one. This says here, "I say the truth in Christ; I lie not. My conscience also bearing with me, bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost." What is trying to say here? Let us continue. Verse two. It says that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. To whom? Verse three. For I, for, uh, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Who are these? These are the Jews. He said, desire for them to be saved. And he said, I am not lying. What I am trying to say that I have, I have, I have burdened to this, uh, to this Jews for them to be saved. That's what he said, trying to say that, that he is not lying. And here we can see, he even say here, for I could wish, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. What is trying to say? A curse. A curse, that is, this is, uh, the word a curse is same with the word anathema. You know what anathema? Anathema is the same thing, a curse. Let me give you some verse para po makita nyo ito. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22, para makita lang po natin yung, yung word anathema. 1 Corinthians 16:22 If if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ let him be anathema maranata Intindihin niyo po yung verse If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ let him be a curse That is what trying to say here And the word Christ uh, the word curse on in, in, in Romans chapter 9 is saying I am be willing to be separated from Christ just for this Jews to be saved and he said I am not lying that's ganun po kabigat yung sinasabi ni Apostle Paul that he is not lying that's how serious he is he is willing to be willing po siya na mapa, mapa, ano, mapahamak maligtas lang itong mga Jews na to. So, I hope makita po natin yung bigat bigat when he say, God is my witness. Even us, God is our witness. In uh, Romans chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1, verses 10 to 11. 
second Corinthians 10 ito po ay hindi ko na po masyadong papara pero isipapapasahin ko lang and then as the truth of Christ is in me no man shall stop me of of this boasting in the regions of Achaia wherefore because I love you not God know it As, parang ibig sabihin po ni Paul dito sa mga taga Corinthians ako pa ba ang hindi nagmamahal sa inyo that's what Paul is saying God knows ako pa ba ang hindi nagmamahal sa inyo Alam nyo, when, when we are being rebuked on the, on the pulpit by our pastor, huwag nyo siyaping hindi kayo mahal. Our pastor is concerned. And here Paul said, ako pa ba ang magsasasabihan nyo na hindi ko kayo mahal? I hope you can see the, 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 the weight here na makita po natin that we could see how serious this is when it comes to God. Uh, one more verse in 2 Corinthians 11.31. Okay, third part. The God and the Father, here, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth, knoweth that I lie not. Sabi niya, alam ng Diyos Ama, alam ng Diyos ng, uh, ng Anak, na hindi ako nagsisunungaling. He's making God his witness. You see the point? Nakita niyo po ba rito? Kung how, when he said, I lie not, be, sabi niya, behold, before God, I lie not. Dito, ganito po siya kaseryoso when it comes to, to, to his word that what uh, the Lord have given him. Okay. The word I lie not, I lie not, is not only a strong word of declaration. Okay. Let me give you a biblical meaning of what is lie. At least, yun lang po yung nakuha. Lie means an intentional violation of the truth. Meaning po ng lie. An intentional violation of the truth. Lies are emphatically condemned by the scripture. Alam po natin yan. But here, let me just give you at least a mic sing. Ano lang po dito when it comes. So it says here, lie is an unintentional violation of the truth. Do you know that when you lie, it is a premed- premeditated sin? Alam niyo ba yan? When you lie, it is a premeditated sin sin. Wala naman nagsinungali. Ay, aksidente yung nagsinungali mo ako. No. Before you lie, you planned it. Yun pong sinasabi ni Paul dito. Sabi na, God is my witness. That's why when we lie. Do you know, the first time that I came here in Cambodia, I know there's strong, one of the strongholds, the spirit of lies here in Cambodia. I hope you will be, you will be aware of that. One of the strongholds here in Cambodia is the spirit of lies, the devil of lies. Kasi po, pag nagsinungaling ka, it is not something accidental. You are thinking of it. You are meditating of it. And you know it. Ha? ha kunyari, nakalimutan ko magsisinungal. No! You know that. Kunyari lang po, ito, pasay siya na ako, sasabihin ko lang. Kasi kung buko, yung iba rin, kumukuha ng ulam sa akin eh. Kunyari yung utang. Hindi ho! You know that! You know that. Hindi yung utang. Yung pagsisinungaling. <laughs> Hindi, <laughs> nagbabayad naman po ba, sorry. Hindi <laughs> po yun. O, ito yung managagalit sa gaya. Nagbabayad kayo man, alam ko. See, what I'm trying to say here is that lie, ganun po ang lies. I hope we could see that. So, Paulus is not lying. Okay. Lies is empathically, ito'y mariin na kinukundi na sa banal na kasulatan. In John 8.44, Ye are of your father the devil, And the last of your father, he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning uh, and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Natural sa kanya yon. For he is a liar and the father of it. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mother, for manslayers, for warmongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for, the, for man-stealers, for liars, for perjured person, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to the sound doctrine. 
lie is mentioned. It is being condemned by the, by, the, by the scripture. In Revelation chapter 21, verse 27, and there shall, there shall in no wise enter into, the, enter into it any that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie. But they, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 22 verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and warmongers, and murderers, and idolaters, idolaters and whosoever love it and make it a lie. See? Lies being done. So here makikita po natin that Paul is really serious. He's, it is not only strong, actually here, sorry po. If you are going to study this, actually it is not only a declaration. It is an oath. It is an oath. An oath, it is a vow that he promised or something like this. Swearing in the name of God. It is a solemn promise. It is an oath for him to do that. Behold before God, making God his witness. Alam po natin that Paul, be, Paul before he saw Pharisee, right? He knows the law. He knows the Mosaic law. He knows the Mosaic uh, tradition. He knows the Pentateuch. He knows the law of Moses. He knows that. But here we can see that Paul is making God his witness. Paul is a Pharisee. He knows the law, but here Paul is using the name of God. See, sabi niya, God is my witness. God is my witness. What does the law say about taking oaths? I'll be, I will just give you one verse. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 7, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Although this was mentioned in the Old Testament, but sometimes even Christians use the name of God in vain. OMG! Parang pinagmamalaki pa yun. Pero Kristiyano. And sometimes you Christian, you be aware of this. When you write the word God in your, in your profile, tiyakin nyo capital G. You're making the name of God in vain. Even in that kind of thing that we do. We should be aware. Maging sensitive tayo noon. And we believe that God does not allow that and God will not be honored when it comes to that. When we use His name in vain. Even until now. Yes, we are under grace, but God, we should not put the name of God in vain. We should not do that. Paris don't you, Pharisees don't use the name of God in vain. May tama sila. Actually, tama sila, di ba? Alam nila yan. Walang po nila yan. You know why Jesus was persecuted? Although alam po natin ang buhay ng Panginoon, pero you know why He's being persecuted? Because He's claiming God is Father, making Himself equal, and that's why He's being persecuted by the Pharisees. Blasphemy, blasphemy, blasphemy. See? That's why he's being that's why he's being persecuted by the by the, the Pharisees. Alam po natin yan. But here we can see what Paul has done and what he is living for, and that is to glorify God in his life. Being God being with him. So here po makikita po natin ang kanyang buhay, and we can see the life of Apostle Paul, how he he really seriously takes the task as a believer as a preacher as an apostle of the Lord be making it serious, take it seriously and it's not even a joke he said he been willing to die because when I die it is a gain for him eh, kanina nga di ba lalo yung corona napapraning nga tayo di ba napapraning na pag yun pa lang but that is not how the world will end. Alam mo natin yan. Alam natin yan. Hindi dyan mag-e-end ang world kasi mayroong prophecy sa Bible. 
So I hope and I, I pray that makita po natin how Paul, so here makita po natin when, when Paul took, took that, uh, even uh, take it seriously, yung pong kanyang pananawagan sa Panginoon. When he used the name of God, what, is try, what the Bible is trying to say that he, he, uh, God is with him, or he is, uh, God is always, he is always glorifying God because he always abides with God. And he knows that. Paul knows that. Alam po niya bilang isang mananampalataya, bilang isang, isang lingkod ng Diyos, na dapat lagi mong kasama ang Panginoon. Although hindi siya humihiwalay sa atin, sometimes we feel humihiwalay sa atin ang Panginoon. Hindi yan. Tayo kasi ang tumalikod sa Diyos. Or maybe we are the one getting so far from Him by disobeying Him in our life. So I hope makita po natin yan how Paul gave importance to that. And he is really serious when it comes to serving God. Maaaring sabihin po natin, oh, kasi si Paul, yeah, you are you. Are you. Because the Holy Spirit that Apostle Paul has in his life, same Holy Spirit that we have. Same Bible, same Jesus, same Father. Yung po yung laging sinasabi po na sa atin ng pastor natin minsan. Di ba? We have. Bakit magkaibang ginagawa? Is it because of our dedication? Or is it because of our seriousness to when it comes to obeying God? Sabi ni preacher John kanina, paano kapag wala na ka, ano? Wala ka ng trabaho, gusto mo na palang, gusto mo magpulta, pero takot ka, wala ng pera. Or, or the Lord said, o oh, ganito ang gawin mo, takot ka pa rin. You cannot go out of your comfort zone. But here, minsan mo, it is because we are being filled with the world. But if we will be filled with the word, alam nyo, yun lang po ang magpapalakas sa atin. Bilang mga mananampalataya. And I hope, magkaroon po tayo ng ano, magkaroon po tayo ng desire. Not only our pastor, although ako sabi ko, I have to study more and more, mga preacher, but for us, to, to have a serious study of the word of God, kundi natin naintindihan, nandiyan ang pastor, we have question and answer. And I hope makita po natin to. We need to learn, we need to learn, we need to learn. You know, I even pray, I am not boasting, but I am begging God, God, please give me wisdom just for me to understand your word. Let the Holy Spirit illuminate my heart that I may be able to know what to do in serving God. So here, makita po natin ang pagiging seryoso po ni Apostle po how he, he dedicated his life to God. And in uh, verse 20, 20, 22 po, and was unknown by the face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. He was not even known yet. Here, hindi pa po sila nakita personally. Or in verse, tama ba yun? 20, okay. And was unknown by the face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. So, mga man ng palataya. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. Nakita po natin, you know what, these, these people, actually po, in verse, anong verse yun, yung, okay, in verse 21 muna po. In verse 21 says, afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia. Do you know that? He said, I came. Actually, he go back. You know why? Tagasa mo si, si Paul. Paul is, pinanganak po siya sa Tarsus. Do you know why he is a, a, a Roman citizen? Paul became a Roman citizen because he was born in Tarsus. In that time, that is a, a Roman colony o pagsasakop ng mga, ng mga Romans at kapag ipinanganak ka doon, you will be naturally born, become a Roman. Diba sabi ng soldier sa kanya, Are you really a Roman? I paid a big amount for me to become a Roman. Sabi niya, no, ipinanganak ako. Pinanganak akong Romano. Because he was born in Tarsus, and that is in in Cilicia, he went back after he from Damascus. Makikita po natin yan. And in verse 22, and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had had heard only naririnig lang nila that he which persecuted us in time past, now preaches the faith which once he destroyed. We know the life of Apostle Paul, how he persecuted the Christian. You know why, why, why these Pharisees are persecuting the Christian? Because Christianity and Christ 
Islam's the doctrine of Paris, the Pharisees. Kasi here, it was shown that to be a Christian, they follow the Lord, nakita nila rito kung paano, bakit nangyayari sa mga taong ito? Why are this thing happening to these people? They're not even Jew. They're not even Pharisees. They don't even know the Word of God. And here, parang nahan-nano sila sabi, that's why here, and they're thinking that Jesus, even Paul especially, thinking that Christ is a false prophet. And the Christians are his followers. So here, makita po natin that uh, 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 Paul showing that he persecuted the church. Sabi niya, makita ko man sila dito o sa ibang bansa, I am going to bring them back to Jerusalem. You just give me a letter of authorization letter for me to drag them back to Jerusalem para ma-persecute sila. Pero sabi niya, eto na, the one who destroyed, the one who destroyed the gospel, now preaching the gospel. And we can see that in the life of Paul. And in verse 24, and they glorified God in him. Why did they glorify God in him? Because he is now doing the things of God. He is now preaching the gospel which once he destroyed. Now he is now teaching this. He is now sharing the gospel to the people that, that they really don't know the Lord. And through that, they glorify God in Him. Parang ganito lang yan eh. Nabalitaan mo, kunyari si Brother, uh, Brother Gomer, isang mamamatay tao, ganito, ganito, ganito. Masa ba siya? Ano ba? <laughs> Tapos bilang nakita mo, nakakilala siya sa Panginoon. And now he's being used by the Lord. Dati kinakatakutan yan. But now, wow, this man is really a changed man. He really knows the Lord. I hope and I pray makita po nila sa atin. I'm not saying no. Gusto pong makita nyo that for us as a Christian, that may see, they may see Christ in us. That they may see Christ in us. The reason why they glorify God in Him, it is not because of what He did, but it's because of His faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. His faith on the Lord Jesus The enemy of faith before, but now the friend of the gospel. He is now the friend of the gospel. He is now sharing the gospel to these people. This one, isang tanong po ito, is God glorified in our life? Kayo po makakasagot niyan. I cannot answer that, but is God glorified in your life? Lagi kong sinasabi ito, yung trademark, we are not perfect, right? We are not perfect. But, listen to this, but when we sin, we should not be happy. We are not perfect, we commit sin, we commit mistakes. But when we commit mistakes, we should not be happy. Why? Alam po natin yan, God is not glorified. I'm not saying hindi na tayo magkakasala, magkakasapal pa rin po tayo. But as a believer, as a man, as a woman who has the Holy Spirit, when you sin, there is always a war inside of you. There is always a bomb blowing in you kapag ka nakagawa po tayo ng kasalanan, hindi tayo mapakali. Kaya pag halimbawa, isa kang sinasabi mong kristyano ka and you do sin and you're not even blushing, think of it. Think of it. Pag nagkasala ka, ha, okay lang yan. Ganito lang yan. O, sisina. No. Think of it. When you have the Holy Spirit in you, there is always a correction. When you have the Holy Spirit in you, there is always a struggle. When you are disobeying the will of God. Alam po natin yan. God is glorified in full life because He is doing His will in full subjection. Si Paul Holm, hindi naman siya perfect. Eh. But one thing that we can see in Him, how He glorified, how He obeyed the Lord in His life, that how He subjected His life to the Lord, that He is even willing, He is even willing to die for the Lord. So I hope and I see, nakita po natin yung uh, message in these five verses, and I hope and I pray that it give us strength it encourages us and it need be kung naribok po tayo let's just continue to uh, humble ourselves before God and continue to uh, ask God to help us to do His will let's pray tayo po lang tumayo